In trig equations, we're solving for the unknown angle. So I'm going to start with a really basic one. I'm going to say cos theta equals a half. Okay, so in this, the unknown is the theta. So to solve for the unknown, we're going to be using on the calculator a shift function. Okay, so I'm going to use some really non-mathematical terminology now to explain what we're doing because I want you to understand the concept and not just work blindly through the exercises. So this is a way of uncausing a cos equation or when we get to assign one, you're going to unsign it or you're going to untan it. Okay, so essentially what the shift function does, shift is just a way of getting to a different function in the calculator. So the shift over there, my shift, which goes along with cos, means that what I am now getting to, and I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, but in the cos, by the cos button, there is a cos to the negative one over there, which is not technically one over cos, okay, but it is the opposite function of cos. That's what you've got to understand. So shift means we're using the opposite function. Okay, so in order to get this one, I'm going to need to shift cos that. I'm going to shift cos the number. Please understand, I'm not applying a cos function to the fraction. I'm doing exactly the opposite. Okay, so back onto the calculator. I'm going shift cos using my fraction button, one half, closing my brackets, and I'm going to get out 60 degrees. Okay, so how do I write this down? I'm going to say, I'm going to put down the cos to the negative one and I'm going to put down the half. Okay, that is to show what I'm doing. Initially, I would recommend you do that step, but I don't think it needs, it's something that needs to be done every single time you do a trig equation. When I do that, I get out 60 degrees. And what that means is that theta is 60 degrees and that is my answer for now okay I say for now because these are going to change drastically in grade 11 but right now all you really need to get your head around is the shift function and the bed mass applications to equations in my second example I've got a coefficient of the cos theta okay now the rule is you only shift when you've got it exactly the way that you need it. So you shift when you've got the trig function all by itself and then something on the right hand side. You then shift whatever the trig function is, the thing on the right hand side. Okay, that's not what I've got. I've got three cos thetas gives me a half. So I want you to think about if you had three x and if we treat cos theta like one thing, which it is, if you had 3x equals a half, what would you do? You would divide the half by 3. So that would give you 1 over 6. So that means my answer here would be x equals 1 over 6. And that's as far as I would go if it was an algebraic equation. But because it's a trig equation, I'm going to need to use my shift button. I'm going to treat the cos theta like I treated the x. I treat it as one thing. Okay, so I'm going to divide the half by 3 and we know that we get 1 sixth. So I'm going to have cos theta by itself, both sides divided by 3 and I get that. And now it looks pretty much like the blue one, excepting it's not cos theta gives me a half, it's that cos theta gives me 1 over 6. And so what I need to do is I need to shift cos the 1 over 6. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say my cos to the negative 1, which is my shift function of 1 over 6. And I'm going to get an answer that tells me what the angle is. Right now the angle is just theta by itself, but in the next examples we're going to find it something else. So when I do that and I round off to two decimal places, check it on your calculator quickly. I get 80 comma 41 degrees and what that means is that the theta is going to be the same number. For my third example 
I got the coefficient not of cos with the angle but just of the angle okay now the same thing applies as the previous one this concept is one thing it's one term okay yes I am going to separate the angle from its function of cos when I do my shift but I can't separate it in any other way I can't for example now divide both sides by three I've got to first do my shift and then divide by three so the rule is when you've got the sine or cos or tan function with an angle whatever that angle might be and there's nothing there and there's nothing below and so on then I've got to do my shift in that step okay so we remember that when we did the shift function for a half we got 60 degrees and now whatever the angle is is 60 degrees so this means that my three theta which was my angle my angle was three thetas okay they give me 60 degrees and now I think it's really clear what to do now it's just saying okay what if this was an x what if it was three x is 60 you just divide by three so I'm going to I would divide both sides by three and I would get theta is 20 degrees so it is a very different answer to when I just had cos of 1 theta is a half but the first step was exactly the same and what changed was the step after that so you've got to understand that you cannot separate these until you've done your shift that is your separation okay and only at that point can you start messing around with the coefficient of the theta so what if something is added on what if we have the sine theta plus 2 can we shift at this point and we've got to go back to the rule the rule goes when you've got the trig function by itself even if the angle is more than one and then you've got something on the right hand side that's the point at which you shift so we're not there yet we have got to move this one so I'm going to apply ordinary equation rules and remember that I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides okay doing all of these steps on the calculator okay so then I've got sine theta by itself all right and when I take one and a half and I minus two from it I get negative a half okay so now the other thing that we've got that's a little different is we've got a negative number here for now you're going to still shift with a negative number and again that's going to change in grade 11 so I'm going to take my sine function and I'm going to shift the sine function so first I press shift and then I press sine and then I'm going to put in my negative a half okay and what I get out when I do that is I get negative 30 degrees which means that the theta I was dealing with here is equal to negative 30 degrees so what I did was I had to get rid of that thing first much like the coefficient in number two but here it was something added on and that had to go to the right hand side first before I could apply the shift here the complication is something has been added to theta inside the brackets okay can I shift yet yes my rule is when I've got sine causal tan of the angle just got to get our heads around the fact that the angle is theta plus 25 yeah I'm going to solve for theta by the end of it but right now I need to um, appreciate the fact that the angle itself is something with 25 added on so I'm going to shift tan the naught comma seven and I'm going to get an answer and then I'm going to deal with that much like when we had three theta in front there for question three okay so I'm going straight into the shift because it's tan of the angle equals a number so I'm going to do my shift and I can show this and I'm going to get out an answer there okay I'm going to write down the full answer because I'm going to round off right at the end and that's a good rule of thumb for almost any process in math so it's a really long one okay I am going to shorten it by the end and what I know then is I know that theta plus 25 degrees gives me this long number ok 
okay. Now, the reason I'm keeping all the decimal points is if this was maybe a 4 theta plus 25, then I'd have to divide through by 4. And I don't want to divide something I've already rounded off by 4. I want to round it off right at the end so that I get the most accurate rounding off. Okay. So now I know that theta plus 25 equals the 34 comma something. So I'm obviously going to minus 25 on both sides. And when I do that, I get 9, comma, it'll be 9, 9. And 2 won't take it up, so it'll be 9, comma, 9, 9 degrees. You round off to two decimal places unless you're instructed to do otherwise. For my last example, I've put all of the complications in together. So I've got a coefficient of the trig function. I've got subtraction or addition. I've got multiplying the angle by something and adding on something okay so i've got to now follow bed mass but i've got to do it backwards so remember that with bed mass you're dealing with brackets then exponents then division and multiplication interchangeably and then addition and subtraction interchangeably so if we were multiplying everything and trying to trying to simplify we would follow that order but when we're solving an equation we're going backwards so first get rid of the addition and subtraction there we go not the one inside there why not because it's in brackets it gets done last so we're literally working our way up from bed mass okay so the first thing I've got to do is get rid of that minus one on the end and the way that I always think about it is I think about what is attached to the unknown the theta the furthest away what is the least attached because that's the one that's got to go first this is attached by multiplication which is a lot tighter in my mind I'm using metaphors now to explain how I understand it but this has got to go because it's too far away from the theta so can I do a shift yet no I need to first move that one okay so I'm going to keep this the way it is and I'm going to move that one or in correct mathematical terminology, I'm going to add one to both sides. When I do that, I get one comma six here. I'm sure you can do that step in your head. Okay, now what's got to go? What's got to go is this two. The two is attached to the sine function with its angle by multiplication. So to undo it, I'm working up my bed mass. The next thing to get rid of is the division and multiplication. And then within the brackets, I'll deal with it all over again. So I've got to divide through by 2. So I'm going to keep my sign with its angle, which this, this thing stays intact until the absolute last stage. So now I've got that, and I'm going to divide that side by 2. So I'm going to get 0, 8. Please check with me on your own calculator if you're not sure how quickly I'm going through this. Um, you need to know that you can use your own calculator. But at the moment, I'm, I'm hoping that you can see how I'm getting these numbers. So now I've got sine of the angle is a number. That's the point where I shift. Okay, so that is the formula or that is the look, the mental model in my head of how I know that I now need to shift. Okay, so now I'm going to do sine shift of the 0, 8 and I'm going to get a nice long answer. I'm going to get 53, 1. Three zero one oh two three five. I keep it like that because stuff's going to happen there. Okay. So that means that my angle, which was three theta plus ten degrees, that equals this long number. And now I solve like that's an x. And I go back to bed mass because this is my bracket and I'm going to do it last. Okay, so I need to get the 10 across and then divide by 3. So first I'm going to subtract 10 and I'm going to have 3 theta is 43 comma long thing. And you can do that because we know you're working with this original number and it's very clear that you're going to only divide, that you're going to divide here and then you're only going to round off right at the end. So then my theta will involve this being divided by 3, which gets me to 14. And now I'm rounding off, comma 3, 
8 degrees. And this example covers all the different ways in which this theta can be modified and, and basically how the equation can be made more complex for things that you can do. One last reminder, if you had the entire function divided by 2 in the initial step, or if there was perhaps a half over there, then you'd need to multiply 2 on this side and you'd end up with this function equals 0, 0,6 and you take it from there. So don't get upset by fractions, just follow your normal protocol for them too.